Welcome to the AP Physics Lecturing on Kinematics. This I'm going to be covering acceleration. So this is the goal and the objectives for this lesson. Let's look at the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change in velocity. So you can see that as A is equal to delta V over delta T. Yes, acceleration is um, the rate of change in velocity. So what that means, it is actually the rate of a rate because velocity is already a rate, okay? So think about velocity as more of how quickly the velocity changes. Velocity is measured in meters per second and the fact that we introduce another time component to it, uh, acceleration's unit is meters over second squared because acceleration is how fast the velocity changes. So there are types of speed. You have your constant speed and your constant velocity. So constant speed um, makes no mention of direction in any way, but constant velocity does. So when delta V equals to zero, velocity is a vector consisting of both magnitude and direction. So constant velocity must have both magnitude and constant direction. This implies that A equals to zero because if velocity is constant, there is no change. If there is no change in velocity, there can be no acceleration. Instantaneous speed and velocity. Instantaneous speed and velocity is the acceleration at that moment. But sometimes we have the average speed. The average speed is just your total distance divided by your total time. So average velocity can be seen as displacement divided by total time. Now we're gonna actually see the difference, okay? The important thing for you to understand is that if the question says constant velocity, that means A equals to zero. There can be no acceleration. That's the very important part. If you wanna read the reason why, here you go. But if the question says the object moves at constant velocity, you put A equals to zero. Done. Now we're going to talk about this special incline called Galileo's incline. It's a classic example of acceleration, okay? A ball is rolling down an incline with an angle of 12.84 degrees. The acceleration of the ball is 2 meters per second. If you want to take a look, it can look something like this. Okay, here's the ball. It goes down this incline for the angle here is equal to 12.84, right? And here can be the ramp. Okay. These things are given here in this chart. Velo uh, the acceleration here is given by two meters per second always. If the acceleration is two meters per second, then here, right, the delta V over delta T has to be equal to two, right? It has to be plus two each time plus two each time because that is the acceleration okay the displacement is proportionally to the square root of time so this is one of your kinematics that you're going to i'm going to explain down the road but this is what you should know so far this is how they get the position values displacement and position have the same values when the object starts at the origin so you can write delta x just is equal to x because x not equals to zero. All right, so now we're going to see that incline with acceleration, right? There's acceleration here. We're going to see that in our motions. First of all, we look at our dot diagram in our motion diagram. Here, notice it starts at zero, zero. Then it goes to one meter. Then at the next one, it goes to uh, three meters three meters, so it's at four, and so on, and so on, and so on, okay? We could see that given here in a table, okay? Then we could see that in the position versus time graph because here it shows at the first second, it is at one. At two seconds, it is at four, right? One plus three is equal to four, right? So this is at one second. This is at two second, 
This is at three seconds. It's at nine, right? Five plus three plus one. This is at four seconds. It is plus seven, so that becomes 16. This is at five seconds, okay? Notice that the positioning is changing, right? This, you could see it, it behaves like almost like an X squared value. If we graph the velocity versus time graph, you should see the slope like this. Because notice, this is what? It goes from two, this is velocity two. Then here it becomes four and it becomes six. And this is seven, no, this is eight. 10 and so on and so on. The slope of the position versus time graph is still velocity and the area of velocity versus time is still displacement. Okay, so this you can go as the slope, right? This is still true and if you get the area here, it is still this. However, we can add one more column for the acceleration. We introduce the acceleration here as two, 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 two. Why is that? Because that is right here, the change, right? That's your delta here, that's the change. And that change here is constant at two. Since the velocity is the change in the slope of the position versus time is also changing. Instantaneous velocity at a specific time is the slope of a tangent line to the function at this instance. So what that means is slope here equals to this, okay? Likewise, since velocity is the change of the slope of position versus time is also changing, right? Now let's examine the slope of the velocity versus time graph. The rise is a change in velocity and the run is the change in time. So we should see that the slope of velocity versus time is accelerating. We should see it here. The height is accelerating and the base is changing over time. The area of the acceleration versus time graph is the change in velocity. I'm going to show it to you. However, can delta V be used to find the instantaneous velocity at a specific time? Yeah, we just do the area. Okay, let me show you. We just need to know that the initial velocity was 5 meters per second. Okay, all right, so let's do this. So the first one is the area on, at zero is just zero, zero, right? When the velocity is two, the area is two plus zero, right? When it is, when the velocity is at four, it is four plus zero. And six is six plus zero, eight, eight plus zero, 10, 10 plus zero, okay? These are all the different velocities and we get it right here, okay? If we now find the area here under the velocity graph, it equals to 36. That is just the area of this triangle, okay? That matches up right here as well. So what is the whole point of this? Is for me to try to get you to understand how the graphs are related to each other, okay? If you take the slope of the position of time, it gets you the velocity. If you take the slope of the velocity, it gets you the acceleration. Now you can go backwards. If you find the area here, area, right? Height times base. This is just different ways we can compute area. It gets you back to velocity, and if you get the area under velocity, it's going to give you positioning. This is the whole thing I want trying to get you to understand. So this is something you should memorize and understand why that is. Let's take a look at acceleration. It's actually, acceleration is complicated if you do not see how it's working, okay? So acceleration has both magnitude and direction, okay? So we're gonna look at the four possibilities. If it's moving to the right and it has positive velocity, it is like this, positive and positive. So this, you can think about it as the car is speeding up. But if it's moving to the right and velocity is decreasing, imagine this as you're braking, right? So you're slowing down. 
because your velocity is negative. It's in the opposite direction. What about if you're driving left and you're um, pressing on the speed, right? Your velocity is increasing. So here, this is when you're speeding, but you're speeding to the left. But what about if you're speeding to the left and applying your brakes? You're slowing down here, right? A negative of a times a negative is a positive, okay? So these are your just four different possible scenarios. And this actually does affect the graph in a certain way. So here, this is when the car is actually speeding to the right, okay? We could see that the position here starts at zero and it goes super, super quick, right? Because again, this is speeding up, speeding up. So your velocity, if you look at the velocity here, it is constant. And if you find the slope of this um, graph of the velocity, we would see that acceleration is constant and it's positive. Okay. What about the second scenario? Now it's slowing down, but to the right. So it looks like this. It starts from zero, but it starts slowing down, right? This is slowing down. That's why the position here stops. Likewise, if we look at velocity, the slope here would still be positive, positive, right? It, it just slows down. That's why it declines here, right? This declines because the slope here, the slope is decreasing. That's why it's a decline. If the slope here declines, it is flat here. If it declines, right, the slope here is negative. Now, what about if it speeds up? Okay, right? We already know that it starts positive and it goes to zero. So let's just look at the slope here. What is the slope here? Well, it starts off flat, then it goes negative, negative, more negative, more negative. So it starts off at zero and it goes more negative. So it goes like this, right? starts off zero and it goes more negative, right? More negative, right? So what does that mean? This is still a decline. So the slope here is going to be negative. What about if you're slowing down, um, going left? It should look like this. Why? Because here the slope is negative right? Super negative, negative, negative. Now the slope here is zero. So what should this look like? Well, you start from super negative and it goes to zero. Okay. So think about this as like going to the right and um, applying your brake. So your velocity is going to go towards zero. So here you would say that the slope here is what? Positive. So, right? So, uh, not decline, sorry, this is increasing. That's the better word. So this is going to be positive, okay? That is what it's referring to. Now, conceptually, understand acceleration as thought to how much velocity is changing over time. We could actually see this um, using parallel vectors, okay? Using vector diagrams of a of an object that has an initial velocity of 6.0 meters per second to the right and they experience an acceleration of 2.0 meters per second squared for 20 seconds for two seconds so this is at the first second it starts at 60 then i add in other arrow because this is the change so it becomes 80 meters per second that is the resulting um, velocity now at two seconds, the new velocity was eight meters per second. This is the um, this is the acceleration. So now it becomes ten meters per second. So think about this: is the velocity at one second, right? At one second, and this is the velocity at two seconds. Okay, how it's changing, right? And it's also increasing, but now. What about if it's in the opposite direction? So it looks like this. At one second, right, it starts at six, but the acceleration is in the opposite direction, right? It's a negative. So at one second, so velocity at one second equals to four, because that's the resulting vector. Now we start at four and we subtract two, right? This is at two seconds. 
now it becomes at two meters per second okay this is what happens when it's parallel okay but it's in the opposite direction here what happens if it is perpendicular to the motion so it looks something like this okay and here you can just apply your um, Pythagorean theorem but here the resulting one is 6.2 meters and it goes goes the you know, perpendicular but here you would have to use some law of cosines okay you're never going to be asked something hard like this okay so don't worry about it right that's about it for the video lecture I just included some here if you don't have it this is just the different relationships that you're going to be dealing with okay you should see that this is some of the accelerations okay now we're going to get into some calculus okay average acceleration can be determined as just the slope okay because this can be seen as your v initial and this can be seen as your v final you can find the acceleration by looking at this slope so we could say that the slope in this case or the acceleration is at three meters per second squared here's the calculation but this is average acceleration how do we find instantaneous acceleration so instantaneous is at exact a, an exact location so in this case we're going to look at it right here at four seconds and here's the calculation for it they got us 3.33 meters per second squared. So the question is, how can we get the average to become the instantaneous acceleration? Okay. If you take a look, the uh, right here, this is the original um, slope. But what happens? And right here, this is delta t and this is delta v okay this will go to zero what that means is that this length down here is going to become zero so let me show you if it's instantaneous or originally remember it is super big like this this was your delta t right but what happens if we shrink it what happens if we shrink it what happens okay what about if we pick the point to be from here to here right do you see how right here the delta t is smaller okay but what about if we keep decreasing it what about if we keep decreasing it from this point to this point so here would be your delta t and this is your delta v do you see how it gets smaller and smaller so our goal is to make it so that delta t which is down here right acceleration is the um delta t over delta v we make it so we make it so that this goes towards zero. If this goes towards zero, this gets super smaller to the fact that it's right on top of here. Once it's right on top of here, we consider that a derivative. Okay. And the derivative at this exact point will give us the instantaneous acceleration. All right. That's just a calculus in for you here. It's beyond the scope of AP Physics 1. But I just wanted to show you how you can get instantaneous acceleration from average acceleration. Okay? All right. But there you go.